episode seven of the Forks and Podcast. Um, they opened Wally Beach this morning. It's been absolutely nuts, absolutely bananas. Um, as I'm making this, police, fire, ambulance is all going down back and forth on the beach. Um, paddy wagon got brought out about a half hour ago, saw that go by the house. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I was working today. It was absolutely nuts. Wally Beach is bananas. Like, I, I was, I'm exhausted. So busy. I got a sunburn on top of another burn I got working with Joe the other day. It hurts. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. Whatever. We're going to keep going. Um, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm glad they opened the beach, though. You know, I'm glad people have the freedom to go about doing what they want to do. And you know what? That's good. But also, I was sitting on the porch earlier and I'm like, damn, I miss the silence. I miss the silence at like that you don't normally get living on Wally Beach. I miss the silence at like 830 at night just being able to go sit on the porch and it just be, I have the nice view of Boston with nothing around me, nothing around. I just get to peace and quiet, you know? So I guess it's it rings true that, you know, you uh, you don't appreciate something until it's it's gone, you know? So that's deep thoughts with John Kelly for you right there. Yeah, you know? So, what else? They took off all the HBO shows on Amazon Prime this week. I was about to sit down the other day and uh, play some Entourage in the background while I was cleaning my room. Wasn't there. <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do? Like... How am I supposed to watch Entourage for the seventh time? I was on season six, so close to finishing it. Get the fuck out! How am I supposed to watch The Sopranos for like the tenth time? <laughs> I can't catch a fucking break. How am I supposed to watch Band of Brothers like on Memorial Day weekend like I usually like to do? Like, it's a tradition. I guess I gotta go get the... The uh, HBO Max subscription now. Oh. Then I gotta get Disney Plus because I gotta go watch Clone Wars and Mandalorian. Dude. Whatever. Um, the earlier this week, MLB came out with uh, their new rules for how the baseball is gonna get played. I don't get how you're going to do it with what they're trying to say. They're saying, oh, no uh, no spitting, no sunflower seeds in the dugout. What? No high fives, no fist bumping. Um, no contact whatsoever. Masks in the dugout. How are you supposed to chirp through a mask? I don't get it. <laughs> like, oh, that's pitch twos. Asshole. Like, no, it doesn't work. <sighs> nice hit ones. Dick. No, it doesn't work. Um, at, at, Baseballs are supposed to get thrown out after they're touched multiple times? What? <laughs> like, they're stripping it from, like, everything that it is. Like, what are we going to have, like, going forward? No fighting in hockey? No hits in football? Like, what? What do they expect us to do? How do I... How do, how am I expected as a fan of these sports to watch them? You know what I mean? I don't want to watch baseball where there's nothing fun happening. It's, stu- it's stupid. It's stupid. How are these players supposed to enjoy playing the game? It's dumb. No one's going to watch it. I hope... The MLB Players Association, like, strikes these rules down because they're dumb and stupid. Um, Yeah, dude, it's so annoying. Like, no no high fives, no fist bumps, no, like, low ball fist bumps. It's like, good shit, man, good hit. I like the way, I like the way you uh, stole that base, man. 
No slap ass. A victory. Hey, hey, come on, good game, slap ass, man. Hey, good game. Get some slap ass. <laughs> yeah, guys. Hey, yes, man. Good game, slap ass. <laughs> Good game, bro. Heated. I'm absolutely heated right now. Might be my sunburn talking, but I'm heated. And this coffee, too. This coffee's so good. Um, what else do I have to talk about? I was watching Avatar the other night. Like James Cameron's Avatar. That movie is so good. The CGI, it's like, oh, it's 11 years old now. And the CGI still holds up. Like, it's really good. And the story's great. Bunch of blue people that are like 10 feet tall. Fighting back, fighting for their home. I love to hear that. That's awesome. Um, Yeah, dude. There's sequel supposed to be coming out in December 2021. Why? All right. First off, why have we waited? Why are we going to be waiting 12, 13 years for that? And I assume it's because of the whole Fox thing. The deal they worked out with Fox and then Disney buys Fox or I forget how that works. But And then we got another one coming out in 2023. I heard both of them, the actual photography of the movies, that's over with. It's just all editing, and I assume there's going to be a lot of editing getting done. Look at the movie. It's all CGI. So, that movie's so good. Avatar, man. It's so good. Um, I have an interesting theory. So, the other day... I was doing what I do, and um, I don't know why, but Bugaboo Creek Steakhouse popped in my head, so I'm like, anything that pops in my head, I'm just going to look it up, wiki it real quick, so I just start reading about, and you know, I start reading about Bugaboo Creek Steakhouse on Wikipedia, and it's not a long article, it takes me probably 30, 45 seconds to read, and uh I obviously, but if any, for anyone who ever has ever been to Bugaboo, the animatronics were the thing. They had like the flapping fish. They got that raccoon that comes up and through the the barrel or whatever. Um, but then they had the moose, giant moose and the well not giants just a regular sized moose and then a buffalo head that talk. Those were classic staples. A Bugaboo Creek Steakhouse. And the one we went to was in Braintree. Like 10 minutes away. And uh, that closed. And then I guess all of the whole bit business shut down in 2016. Um, and I was reading that when all these closed, you know, they sold most of the stuff at auction, like local auction and stuff. And it makes sense. And the animatronics they sold at auction, local auctions, but not the moose and the buffalo. Those heads, the big ones, which led me to believe that they said the article was like, I don't know, I don't, we don't know where these went. I know it's Wikipedia, I mean, I could have done more research, but. Why would I do that? I'm trying to get a story, right? What if there is just this warehouse in the middle of the woods or the middle of the desert or something that is storing all of these moose and buffalo animatronic heads? How nuts would that be? That'd be absolutely bananas. Why wouldn't you sell that stuff? I would buy a giant moose or a buffalo head. Even if it didn't talk, I'd still buy it. It looks sick. Um, think about if it did talk. Could I program that to say something else? But, like, 
it blows my mind that somewhere in North America or somewhere in the world, there could be a giant warehouse with a giant, a bunch of moose and buffalo talking heads that, and no one, no one is saying this. How, how, how doesn't this, shut up Siri. How does this not, like, how isn't anyone th hearing, like, thinking about this? You walk into this giant warehouse and you, like, hit something over by accident and it triggers off a rows and rows and rows of giant talking buffalo and moose heads. How creepy, how crazy is that? And the fact that people aren't talking about this it blows my mind. That's absolutely nuts. Dude, I want to find this place. So, it's crazy. Um, absolutely crazy. I would so... Oh, man. I would... If I had the money, I would buy that whole place. That'd be crazy. <laughs> Alright, so enough about Buckaboo Creek Steakhouse. R.I.P. Gone forever, Aaron Hernandez. Um, we got not so real indie bands. This isn't like I came up with this on cruise because I was watching the other guys. And there's the homeless guys that call themselves Dirty Mike and the Boys. And then I don't know, I had diesel oil in my head at the same time. And so I came up with Dirty Mike and the Diesel Boys. And I can just hear it right now on the TV. August 17th. Mansfield, Xfinity Center. Dirty Mike and the Diesel Boys. The Diesel Director. It doesn't really sound... It, might, it could sound like an indie band, but it could also sound like a southern country rock band. Either or. But I think it's a good one. I think it's a good one for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, this week, I also saw the... Um, I started following that Marty with a sign Instagram account. And it's the... Um, it's a, just the same picture of Marty Walsh, Boston Mayor Marty Walsh, with a sign, like a different... He's holding up a sign, but it says a different thing on each one. And they're all funny quotes from, like, the town and the departed and stuff. And it's mad funny. So, yeah. He's a clown. Marty Walsh is a clown. No, no fun this summer. He is a clown. Speaking of clowns, that brings us into our new segment on the podcast. Our weekly political clown. Political clowns of the week. That's that's what it is. Marty Walsh is a political clown of the week because he's a clown. He makes me laugh. And then who else we have? We have uh, I can't. I keep seeing his face on TV because he has every opportunity he has. He has a new. He has the same. He runs the same political ad. Is U.S. Congressman Joe Kennedy? He is a clown. He is our one of our political clowns of the week. He, he gets elected by name only and just has a such a punchable face. Such a punchable face. Um, and he makes me laugh. His face, me thinking about, like, me thinking about how punchable his face is just makes me laugh. Um, and then today, who is the political clown of the week is Joe Biden. <laughs> he says if if you can't if you can't figure out whether to vote for Trump, if you're having a tough time figuring out whether to vote for Trump or Biden, you're not black. And he said that to Charlemagne the God, the guy from the Breakfast Club, who is like I didn't even watch the whole video because like I didn't It just makes me like cringe thinking about what Charlemagne would say because Charlemagne like He's an asshole. Like he's one of the biggest assholes in the game. And I oh man, what a clown. That made me laugh hearing that. Joe Biden is just dude, like there's something wrong with him. And no one's admitting it that like this guy is 
this guy has dementia, and it's terrible that just people are letting him run for political office in charge of the whole country. And you're th- you're accepting that this is okay. It's almost like not letting someone with mental illness get the help that they need. You're putting them up on a well, not putting them up on a pedestal, but you're like you're denying the fact that there could be he could have problems and that he needs help. And I don't know the fact that he said that. And I don't. Who knows if he if he thought of it or one of his aides. But if his aides um, told him to say that, that's funny. That deserves clown of the week. So, yeah, you know what? His campaign gets political clown of the week because I can't believe that his his campaign people will just let him continue to say these things. Oh man, it's it's nuts. It's absolutely bananas. Banana land on Wally Beach tonight. So I think that's pretty much it for this week. I hope you enjoyed. Um follow us on Instagram. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. Listen in next week. I don't know what I'm gonna be talking about, but if you got ideas, you wanna come on the pod, let me know. Always could use guests. All right. Dude, I'm like, I got the sniffies, bro. All these allergies. Pollen, gra- pollen coming from grass. I haven't even heard of that. But Sheary Spears on Fox 20, Boston 25 is saying that there's pollen, abnormal pollen coming from grass now. What do we got? We got 2020, man. We got. Possible war with Iran in January. Then we got all these fires in Australia. Then coronavirus. Now we got murder hornets. Bruce Wood. The meme of Bruce Wood. And now we got pollen coming from grass. I don't understand it. What's next? What is next? What's going to happen next? All right. That's enough. I'm exhausted. Have a good weekend. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.